sourdough with freshly milled wheat. Oh yes, we're gonna be talking about it. But in this video, we're actually gonna be talking specifically about sourdough starter using freshly milled wheat. All my tips and tricks, and I have an unboxing of something that's I'm pretty excited about. Hey y'all, welcome back to Grain to Grit. My name is Felicia and on this channel we talk all things real whole grains, all from a biblical perspective. Now as you know, and if you've been following me for a while, I've been milling my wheat for over a decade, but I've yet to really venture out into the sourdough realm. In saying that, I have been maintaining a sourdough starter for the past like two to three years, very successfully <laughs> with freshly milled wheat. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the sourdough starter aspect, because I definitely have a lot of experience with that. I've tried starting my own, I have bought. Um, so we're gonna be give, I'm gonna be giving y'all tips and tricks and answering the questions, can you use freshly milled wheat with a sourdough starter? I'm also going to be doing an unboxing of a pretty cool product that I was sent by a company and I'm gonna do a little bit of a review of it as well. And in doing so, I'm actually gonna be showing y'all my current sourdough starter that has been dormant in my fridge and we're gonna be reviving it today as well. So a lot of things going on in this video. So let's just get started. Before we begin, do comment below and let us know what your experience is using sourdough with 100% freshly milled wheat. What questions do you have about sourdough? What would you like to see me do on this channel regarding sourdough? I love to have that discussion with y'all in the comments and interact with others as well because we could all learn from your experience. Okay, so first of all, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing an unboxing. This was sent to me and there was one aspect of it that had me super excited to try, which we'll get to in a bit, but this is the T-Mars T-Mars Complete Sourdough Starter Kit. And from what I can see, it's pretty much everything you need for sourdough bread. Um, all the little tools and stuff, now not the starter, you know, the flour, obviously, just the, the essential tools that are good to have for sourdough bread. Now, first off, this was probably the most exciting thing that they have. And that is their Banneton basket, or it's actually not, a, it's not a true Banneton, it's their silicone, it's their proofing basket, but this is silicone. And they have a round one that is nine inches round. And then they also have an oval one, which I do not currently have an oval one, but look at that. First of all, I love how they fold down. So they're easily storable as opposed to like having to stack them up like that. This is nine inch round, 10 inch oval proofing, and it is silicone. And the reason why I am crazy excited about the silicone is I have the regular Banneton baskets like this, and it's kind of like a wicker type thing. Uh, here are my issues with this. One, no matter how many times I flour this thing, I always have my bread stick to it. And when my bread sticks to it, it makes it so hard, so hard to clean. I still, I mean, like, so hard you get that dough in there or even just the flour in here i've ended up actually because i wasn't able to completely clean out the flour because it can go through these little cracks and stuff and kind of stick in here and unbeknownst to me when i pulled these out of like a month or so later um one time i actually had those little black little bugs that like wheat flour basically the little mites that hatch because i was not able to really clean this out thoroughly you cannot throw these in the dishwasher. This is all by hand. And I use like toothpicks and like all the things, but even then flour still was in here and not coming out. And that's not going to be the case with the silicone. Cause first of all, you're not going to be able to get things stuck inside these little ridges. It's, it's silicone. So if you work with it, everything is here and these are dishwasher safe. If you have a dishwasher, I don't, but I suspect that these are going to be way, way easier to clean which means no little bugs hatching from here, which is, which is no good. Again, these are really great, um, but I've just always had a problem with my bread still sticking to it. It's a nightmare to clean. So I'm excited to be trying these out instead. So here they have a little, they call it a spatula. So here we have just a nice little red spatula. It is 11 inches long. It is also silicone. And I will say it feels good. Now it's not floppy, like super floppy. 
it's, it is a little bit on the tip. So that's going to be really nice to be able to, it can even easily scrape things out, especially the starter. I think it's meant to, to scrape the starter out, which is brilliant because I like how it's very long. So it's going to be able to really scrape the starter out as opposed to typically using, you know, one of your little spatulas that have a thing about this big, um, to get it out. So that's going to really make it easy to get the starter out. Love that. We also have a little silicone brush, which I have a million of. Okay. It also comes with, they call it a trimming knife. You probably most know it by Lame or Alam. I think it's Lame with the razor blades in here. Oh, and it does have a cover for it. Now I already have, I already have one of these, but it's always, it's always good to have a spare. It helps you score your bread and it comes with the razor blades that, that go on here and it has the little cover. Now I will say from personal experience, this cover comes off pretty easily. So be careful when you store it, but at least it does give you that cover. Oh yes, this is really cool too. This is a metal scraper. So dividing, shaping, all the things, but I do like how it has, I don't know if you can see it, but it has measurements down there, which is cool. And it also has this cool little cheat sheet. If you can see it, measure equivalence. You do have centimeters on one side and inches on the other. I like the feel of it. It's quite ergonomic. I like that. All right, and this is another part that I'm quite excited about because I typically do my sourdough starter in just a quart size mason jar. Everyone seems to always have these cool little jars and it's not as straight, but they come with a one of the tall straight ones as opposed to Quart size go out. I'll show you later with the one that I have, but I'm really excited about this. It has the lid to it and super cool stuff here. So they do have the measurements here. So you can easily keep track of things. It's in milliliters right here. Um, so only milliliters, but I love this thing. It's a little band. Let me show it to you that goes around your jar. This is to use how to track when you last fed your starter. So you put the band on here and say, because there's a line all right here. Let me zoom up here for you. So if you can see, there's a line here and then you just line it up here. So say I fed on Monday at 6 a.m. And then I place this down to wherever my starter level is. So say I fed my starter and it's to here, the top of it is to here. So I place it here so that way I can actually see how much it grows. And I've done this before with, I usually like to do this, but I usually just use a rubber band. Um, so, and you totally can use that too. But that is a cool feature to have it included and to actually kind of keep track to remind yourself of when you last fed your starter. So I think it's a brilliant little design. If you love these little things, you may say, I don't care, I'll write it on a post-it note and I will use a rubber band. That's totally cool too whatever floats your boat. And it comes with one of these little um, breathable cloth covers. So usually I've used a rubber band or a, a coffee filter in like the lid of a, of a canning jar. So coffee filter, lid of a canning jar, you can use a rubber band, paper towel. There's so many things, but it's really cool to have one because I mean, let's face it, that looks nice on the counter. Not gonna lie gonna look nice. So this is breathable so you can feed your starter but no bugs are gonna get in which is very important for us here in Florida where we have tons of bugs. Okay there's two of these one in Celsius and one in Fahrenheit and this you actually put on the jar and it measures the temperature of your sourdough starter. Brilliant so that way you can see if your sourdough starter is too cold or if it's too hot. So do you know the ideal temperature for sourdough starter is between 70 and 80 degrees. Okay, so if you're interested in this, I actually do have a coupon code for y'all. Just go to grainsandgrit.com slash TMAR, that's T-E-E-M-A-R, and use the code GRAINSGRIT for 10% off if you are interested in these things. Tips with a sourdough starter. <laughs> okay, so I have started sourdough starter with freshly milled wheat from the very beginning. And I've heard other people having this problem, but around day three or four, I actually did start having the starter to mold a bit. Let me know if that, if that has been an issue for you. 
Um, again, that was all with freshly milled wheats from the beginning. I used rye flour, hard red, like I've tried a variety of wheats, but that's kind of been my problem. I also uh, found out that the stronger and older your starter is, the better um, your bread is going to do. And my starters that I made myself, they were always, they were young. Um, they just weren't doing well at all. And so I actually ended up buying a starter from Azure Standard that I have had for the past two or three years and it's been working great. And I trust me, I have beat this thing up, like left it in the fridge, no feeding for months. <laughs> uh, I think up to six months was the highest I did. And it's still been, it's still been fine. I've been, to re I've been able to revive it, no problem. So my advice is if I was to start a starter, which I do wanna start experimenting with, starting a starter with freshly milled wheat. If you do not want to do that and you want to start a starter with regular all-purpose flour, you certainly can do that. Just start a starter with a good quality flour, like the King Arthur flour, organic, unbleached flour. Um, start a starter that way. And then when it gets going, just start feeding it freshly milled wheat. It's very simple. If you already have a starter that has been on nothing but all-purpose flour, just start feeding it freshly milled wheat. That's all. Now I have found that the wheats that my starter likes the best is it does like rye, but not on a long-term basis. So I might start reviving it with rye flour. And then I start switching over to a hard red or hard white wheat. Um, I noticed that soft white wheat um, doesn't rise it as well as the hard red or hard white wheats. Um, but really I've thrown at it whatever I had, whatever a flour I had milled at the time, it could be Kamut, it could be soft white, hard red, hard white, whatever it is, that's what I feed it, okay? I, I, I don't worry about sticking with the same exact flour. I know that the, the gurus will say that that could change the taste, so on and so forth. But do know that the majority of the flour going into a sourdough recipe is going to be whatever I choose to mill that day. Not so much the starter. Um, so that's why I don't worry about it. And I don't think you should either. Really, any sort of flour is going to work out just fine. Again, you'll notice that some rise it higher than others. But so long as you're feeding that starter and keeping it alive, it's it's going to do just fine. I do recommend just buying the starter. Now, you can buy from Cultures for Health, uh, which I think I have a discount code for y'all. I will leave that down below. I got mine from Azure Standard. I think it was there. I think it was called Bread of Life. I will link that below as well. And that's been doing great for me no matter what I throw at it. I mean, that is a hearty, hearty starter. And that's the thing about sourdough is just remember that Ma Ingalls took this on a wagon and went across country. Um, many women did in the past. They had no scales. They had whatever wheat was on hand. They weren't worrying about that. And they were able to make delicious breads for their family. So let's not overthink this. Um, I don't even care about weighing it. You're about to notice that I don't even measure my sourdough starter when I feed it. Um, I'd go, I kind of do it like how Lisa does on Farmhouse on Boone, where we just go for the consistency that we like. And that's what I do. Now, I do know that that can change, but that's regarding that. So right now, as far as keeping the starter alive, it's actually pretty easy to do. Um, so what I'm about to do is pull my starter out that has been dormant for about, um, I would say, a couple months now that I've just set in the fridge, I covered it with a lid and it's been in the fridge for, for a couple months and I haven't fed it at all. And so we just need to revive that. And I'm now going to show you how we're going to do that using the TMR sourdough jar here. Fancy schmancy. We're going to take a quick break and thank the sponsor of today's video, Four Generations Organic Farms. I love them and I will be using their wheat today to make a recipe. Four Generations Organic Farms is a wonderful company that I use quite regularly in my house. So if you're looking for organic wheat berries that are clean and come from a family farm that dates back all the way to the Oklahoma land rush over a hundred years ago, then you definitely want to check them out. I've actually personally gotten to tour their farms and absolutely loved it to see the wheat fields. They have a wonderful operation and they truly care about you as their customers. Not to mention, they also do the right stuff, which is regenerative farming, taking care of their soil, and of course, just growing our good wheat that is good for us all organically. This is actually their Butler's Gold, which is a hard red wheat, which I love. It gives me consistent, perfect bread 
every single time. So to shop for Generations Organic Farms, just go to grainsandgrit.com slash four generations. Use the coupon code grainsandgrit for 10% off your first order and enjoy those grains that are shipped conveniently to your house. And thank you so much to Four Generations Organic Farms for sponsoring this video. All right, so this is my starter. I know what you're thinking. Ew. <laughs> so as you can see here, it has that black liquid on it. And you may think, Felicia, throw this out. It is bad. But good news, it is not. Um, I believe this is called the hooch, which I know is a weird term. Correct me if I'm wrong. But this is no problem whatsoever. So what I'm going to be doing is, and this is normal. I've literally had this in, like, I've had my sourdough starter in, in the fridge before for six months with no feeding it. And it really had a lot more than this. And I was able to revive it, no problem. So here's what we're gonna be doing. First of all, I'm gonna open this jar and we're just gonna pour off the liquid stuff in the sink. And here we are left with a non-black stuff on the top, just a little bit, sourdough starter. I'm also going to grab some freshly milled flour. Okay, so I've lowered you here to kind of show what I like to do. I just poured out the any of the liquid stuff that was on here. And then from here, I do want a bowl. I'm going to set this aside here in this. I'm going to discard about half of this. Now, it does not matter how much sourdough starter that you have. You can literally restart a sourdough starter with like a teaspoon of sourdough starter. It doesn't take much at all. So I'm going to use my handy dandy little scraper here. And I'm just going to go ahead and remove half of it. And I did go ahead and smell it. It smells fine. And again, I could remove more than this. Now this, you do not want to save. Do not, I don't ever save this discard here. It's just not, you know, it's not a very healthy, vibrant one anyway. Okay, so this goes to my chickens. And then now I'm going to now try this out. So let's add it. And as you can see, it's actually quite thick because it's cold. It's also been in the fridge, absorbed any bit of liquid that I had. I do like the scraper, it gets things out nice as I make a huge mess on my counter. Okay, so we got it in the jar. Now starting off with, I do kind of measure a little bit. I like to just add, um, well, let me see. This is about, okay, this is 100 milliliters of sourdough starter. Um, and what I have here is freshly milled rye flour that I've actually kept in my in my freezer. Um, do know, this is an excellent thing to use with that leftover flour that I say to just throw into your freezer um, because it doesn't matter if the flour is old necessarily, especially if it's been in your fridge, as in it doesn't matter if the nutrients have oxidized from here. That's not what we're going for. And it's going to be sitting here anyway. Any extra rye, I just keep here. That way, if I have to feed my sourdough start in a, in a hurry, I don't have to mill the wheat. I just pull whatever I have stored up. So I'm actually just going to add um, a quarter cup of the rye flour. And I do like to start with rye flour. Anytime I do start with a starter, I like to start feeding it rye because rye, it is really good. It, it sourdough starter really likes rye and especially freshly milled rye. It really loves it. So this is really going to help kickstart that starter. So I'm just going to add roughly a quarter of a cup. Again, it doesn't entirely matter because we're going to keep feeding it for a bit. So to that, we're going to add some warm water. And from here, I go for the consistency. And what I like to see is roughly um, a thick pancake batter. Now you can always adjust this going on if your recipes require a different type of sourdough starter. Those deal with hydration levels. It can get really sciencey and crazy. So for now, I just like going for the look. It's what Lisa on Farmhouse on Boone does, works for her, works for me. So we're gonna, and I'm also gonna try to, so we're just adding a little bit and then stir this all up and really scrape down the sides. Okay. Oh, ah, without making a mess. <laughs> I did add a bit too much water, which is not a problem. I'm just gonna add a little bit more flour, which I was suspecting to add a bit more flour anyway. Usually, if you wanna know, if you absolutely need to know, however much starter you have, um, add that amount of flour and then add that amount of water. I do like a one to one to one ratio. However much starter, so it's the same amount of flour, same amount of water. So if you like to weigh it, you can do that as well. Just one to one to one ratio. Hard to see on camera, but this is kind of like, oh, here we go. Mm, there we go. So this is kind of like a good thick pancake batter. Okay. 
Um, and again, this can all be adjusted as you go on. Right now, I'm solely focused on reviving it. So now let's add on our little, oh, actually, let's do this first. So today for me is Wednesday, mm, almost 12 o'clock. So let me move this here. And from here with me starting it, add this on. I'm gonna set it aside. My house is warm enough. I can pretty much place it anywhere. And, um, and I'm actually gonna check on this. Uh, when I start, I do like to feed twice a day, no discard. So later on today, maybe this evening, I'm gonna feed it again, same thing, one to one to one ratio um, to really, until I really start seeing it get bubbled up. Now tomorrow, I'm gonna check on it. And um, that's whenever I start deciding if I need to discard. So that's another big thing there. If your sourdough starter keeps going bad, you do have to discard. You need to, when you really start feeding it, you have to discard half of it and then keep it going. If you don't do that, that will result in things just going downhill very fast for your sourdough starter. So what I'm gonna do, this is day one, pulled it on my fridge, we have fed it. This evening, I'm gonna feed it a second time, um, get it to the same consistency. And then tomorrow, tomorrow morning, I'm going to feed it again. And then I'm gonna see what it looks like that evening. If I'm starting to get it where it's rising up and everything like that, um, that's whenever I start to discard half of it, feeding it once a day. And when I discard half of it, I then feed it back with a one to one to one ratio. Hopefully that makes sense to sum up. I don't discard until I see it that it's actually rising whenever I feed it, okay? That's whenever I'm gonna start discarding it. For now, no discard because we need to feed it as much as possible to get, to get it going. All right, so there you go, y'all. And it is showing it at 76 degrees, which sounds pretty accurate to me because with the warm water, the temperature of my house, it was a cold starter. Yep, that sounds pretty good to me. So I know it's gonna be happy. So um, I'm looking forward to this. Otherwise, let me know in the comments below all your sourdough questions, your sourdough requests. I do need to get on track for sourdough. Like I need, I need to just do it. I need to stop being lazy. Um, but I've had a lot of time to think about sourdough. I've experimented with it and I'm starting to form my own opinions about sourdough bread with freshly milled wheat. Um, and so once I start getting things where I feel like I can share them with you, I will, hopefully that will be soon. But in the meantime, go ahead and get your sourdough starters going because even if you don't have the bread, keep your sourdough starters going because like I said, the stronger your starter is, the better your bread is going to be. So there's nothing wrong with starting a sourdough starter and keeping it for two or three years like me and not really making bread with it because I at least know I've got a pretty good starter. Hopefully this was helpful and gave y'all tips for your sourdough starter. I look forward to seeing y'all next week. Bye.